Thank you, Chairman. It's an, an honor for me to be invited in such an important, such an important meeting. And as a member of the Senate, member of the board of the Senate, I welcome you in this uh, ancient and historical room that uh, has hosted many important events, both national and international. It is uh, uh, an important day. It is an important, very important issue. The one we are discussing here, conflict, is, uh, is a normal in nature. Uh, although we like to see the harmony in nature, the harmony in the, within the animal uh, kingdom, within nature, within the, the plants, and uh, the harmony uh, on the, in, in the natural world, we know that there is full, full of conflict. And uh, the attempt of uh, many ways of, uh, of thought of uh, mankind has been to change this uh, order, this uh, chaotic order, toward harmony. And uh, religion, religions have played important roles in that attempt. Uh, sometimes successfully, sometimes in other, in other directions. And sometimes even the uh, religions have uh, taken a part in this conflict, the important parts of this conflict. Uh, there are conflict among ideologies, there are conflict among people, among parties, among countries. While the dialogue, the search for something that unifies the mankind, something that is above mankind or within mankind should be something that leads our hearts and our souls to a better harmony and to a better understanding of each other. In time to time, people have said that the fault is religion. Uh, there have been, uh, still today, you find people who say that the problem are the religions because the most, uh, the, 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 the most cruel wars, most cruel persecutions have been among religions or even within religions. That's not true. In the last century, the past century, we have seen that the, actually the very worst conflict, the very worst persecution have been put in action, have been implemented by atheistic regimes, such as the communist regimes or the national socialist regime in Germany, the fascism, and that's not true. Somebody has pointed at the fact that monotheism, that today is by far dominant, although not uh, unanimous, but dominant among religions, that monotheism has been in a way uh, a reason for conflict among religions or conflict among people because as long that the, then one recognizes the existence of many gods there is, there, there is the potential for a better tolerance while when uh, you, you think that there is only one god that one must be yours and the one of the others must be the wrong one actually that's not true either because even in times of, uh, of polytheism, there were many com re religious conflicts. And uh, just to put an example, the Roman Empire. Yes, the Rom Roman Empire was very tolerant, so to say, uh, with the, the other religions or gods of other peoples. They even imported some gods from other peoples, from other religions. Uh, in Rome, in the whole... Roman Empire, there were important temples to Egyptian, Egyptian uh, gods and goddesses, and uh, they imported even gods from Persia and from other parts of the world. But still, they were the first, for instance, to persecute systematically and very cruelly and trying to eliminate completely the, the Jews. So that's not the key, too. It's not, the, polytheism is not the root 
either of tolerance in itself, either of tolerance or intolerance among religion. And the same is, of course, for monotheism, because knowing that there is one God should, and often does, remind everybody that there is only one. So if my God is the same of the other people, so we are equal. Uh, some other people say that atheism is the key, because no gods, no conflict of religion. Yes, no conflict of religion, but conflicts of other, of the other kind. So the very root of the problem of conflict, whether it is among religions or among other kind of divisions that mankind has uh, invented for itself, is the conflict that is inside, when the conflict is within one person's soul or heart or mind or whatever you call it. That's the root of violence, that's the root of intolerance, that's the root of a, confront, of a destructive confrontation. I think that uh, uh, a very important step toward dialogue, toward a pacification, toward, a, say, a, a, a word with less conflict, was written in 1948 with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And that was a very good document that recognized the freedom of religion, recognized the equality of all men and women. It uh, promoted and it was the fundament of the United Nations, an organization that was supposed and is supposed to stop conflict, to prevent conflict. It didn't work always, it didn't always work, it did, but it did promote the dialogue among people. The problem is that this declaration is uh, remained in partially only written, and it is as long as it is written only in the official documents. And it is not written in the hearts and the minds of uh, people, especially leaders, both religious leader, leaders, both political leader, leaders, or leaders of other kind of influential uh, entities in the world. The problem is that when it is only written there on the paper, it is not enough. So the dialogue among religions dialogue among religious leaders is very important. The very fact that religious leaders meet each other publicly with uh, kind words one toward the others and uh, kind uh, attitudes one toward the others is a very important message to the people because you see very often that sometimes in the past Leaders have been those who promoted, in some, in some cases, some instances, who promoted hate. And the people were dragged to enter conflicts because their leaders were calling them to holy wars, to the extermination of the evil ones, that is, the others. Uh, but when the, when the leaders meet, friendly meet, even if they disagree on many things, that is a very important message. So even if it is not such a, the, the understanding, the reciprocal understanding is not as deep as uh, one would like, or uh, is not as deep as it is said, it is very important to give that message. And the more there is a dialogue, the more there is a possibility of reciprocal understanding. Uh, the memory of uh, the past, the memory of the past conflicts, should be not a reason to start or to continue no conflicts, but to understand how idle, how useless, and how uh, full of danger and uh, destruction and death and pain were all those conflicts. Uh, in, within Europe, now Europe uh, tries and thinks to be the teacher of tolerance. Oh, within the chart of the, for instance, European Union, we have beautiful words, by the way, very similar uh, to the Decla Human De Declaration of Universal Declaration of Human Rights. 
but it is, and they are absolutely sincere, I, I think, at least for the majority of the people, but we don't have a very good record in the past. We have centuries and centuries, millennia of conflict, religious conflict or political conflicts. Uh, so it is not the fact that uh, European or any other nation that today has a good uh, uh, tolerance, it is not the past usually that teaches something, but it is what we are ready to do for the future, to forget about conflicts and to go toward a reciprocal comprehension. Reciprocal comprehension means that everyone has to have his opinion. Very often in the Western world, uh, dialogue is seen as something, as something that we don't believe in much. Let's listen to the others. And uh, that is not really dialogue, that is listening, it is a good thing. But if, if you don't have your opinion, there is no dialogue, there is just a one direction, one direction passage, which, which is sometimes good because at least to listen to others is, is a good thing, but, but sometimes it generates reactions within. Even in Europe, we have some kind of movements, some kinds of streams that want to go back to the good old times, that is the bad old times of conflict, of intolerance. So we have to contrast that and to be uh, together here, people coming from so many countries with so different religious, spiritual, and personal background is a very, very important, very, very important step, a very important message, a very important asset to share and to develop and to increase. And I very, very honored to be here, to have been invited here in the Senate that, where I am every day, but this is something exceptional. This is something that is once in, probably once in the whole life of the Senate to have a, such, a, such an important moment. And it is a really, uh, really a, a, a big uh, challenge for every one of us to make the best of this meeting and to make the best of all the spirit and of all the goodwill that we have here. So I wish for every one of you and, uh, to, and thanking again all those who organized uh, this, uh, this meeting. My wish is to make the best of it and to meet again, uh, seeing what w the, the progress we have done uh, and uh, looking for new, uh, for new goals of uh, harmony and reciprocal understanding of, of, and the will to grow together within ourselves and in the society, in the whole world. Thank you very much.